Thanks for stopping by to check out this episode of Vintage Audio Review. This episode is going to fall under the etc. category that I have in my little introduction, and the backstory for my desiring to test fuses comes about from reading some stuff about damping factor, and I came across a paper, I believe it was by a PhD named Richard Greiner, and this was from 1980. And one of the things he talked about was fuses possibly causing distortion in sound. And as my Clips La Scala speakers have three amp fuses in them, I thought, oh, this would be interesting to investigate. I could not find anything on YouTube where people actually did fuse testing for audio purposes. I've seen some videos where they see how well the fuses meet their spec. If they're going to be a two amp fuse, do they blow at two amps? That kind of thing. But nobody really talks about the testing of audio fuses that I could find other than people saying, oh, I put in this audio file fuse and it sounded great. Everything in my audio world just seemed to click once that was done. So I decided I would try to build a little test fixture for my Quantasylum QA403 analyzer, which I did. And I tried it out with some things and it seemed to work. So you're going to see the data of that here in just a moment. I bet you can't wait. And then I will talk about what the conclusion is from the data that I measured and just kind of a practical thing. Right now I'm going to pop up the block diagram schematic of my little test fixture, which uh, kind of is this little guy here with cables and, and stuff. And I used a Bryston 2B-LP amplifier set up in the monoblock configuration. For the most part, all my fuses were three AGC fast blow glass fuses, or they're six millimeter by 30 millimeter glass fuses. I used a couple different uh, values, obviously. I did use a ceramic fuse, It'd be like this guy right here. These are ceramic fuses and it's 15 amps. Basically, it acts like a wire going across the circuit so I could make sure there was uh, really no change when I went through a big fuse like that. I did not purchase any audiophile fuses and I'll discuss why uh, after the data is displayed. One thing I should mention about fuses in audio amplifiers and that would be a, a stereo receiver integrated amp or power amp and that would be that there's the three main uses for fuses, one would be coming in right off the AC power cord, there's typically a fuse, and then there may be a fuse in the power supply, usually the plus or minus rails, or it might just have a plus rail. There could be a fuse in series between the output devices and where the, say, plus uh, B is generated, and usually there would be a fuse for each channel. Sometimes those fuses are accessible at the rear of your piece of gear. And other fuses may be actually in line with the speaker. So coming from the uh, amplifier output, before it goes into your speaker terminals, it would go through a fuse and then it would go to your speaker. And those would be fast blow fuses. And sometimes they use a circuit breaker or other things, but right now I'm just looking at fast blow fuses. And the other place that fast blow fuse could be is like with my Clips Scholars, it could be mounted at the back or inside of the speaker. And so that's kind of what I want to do is just see how do these things change if they do change. And so right now we'll get into the data. Right now I have a 15 amp ceramic fuse installed in the test fixture and I've got the power adjusted which is a one kilohertz signal so that we've got about one watt into eight ohm loads which would be about 350 milliamps going through the fuse the left or yellow channel that would be the input to the fuse and the right channel is the output of the fuse in the reddish color so you can see we've got no difference in the power level the gains are identical going through the fuse and the snrs are identical as pretty much are the, the THDs. Uh, we're good to 0.008 and then it varies a little bit, but basically there really is no difference in the 
THD SNR or power going through the 15 amp fuse. And now I have the same 15 amp fuse, but I've increased the power output of the amplifier such that we've got 25.4 watts going through the 15 amp ceramic fuse or about 1.78 amps. And you can see that the gain through the fuse, it's the same and the SNRs are the same and the THDs are darn near the same. So there really is no change with the large 15 amp fuse as far as if I have 350 milliamps going through it or 1.78 amps. Here's the frequency response from 20 hertz to 30 kilohertz of the 15 amp fuse with about 350 milliamps going through it. And you can see there really is no difference in the frequency response and there is just a small amount of difference in the output level of each of the signals. The top signal in yellow is the input to the fuse and the red signal is the output to the fuse. Now I'm going to go ahead and show you what it looks like when we increase the power level to 25.4 watts into 8 ohms or about 1.78 amps going through that 15 amp ceramic fuse and you can see that still there is really no change in the frequency response whatsoever. Right now I have a one half amp fuse installed and we're putting out what 1.62 watts which translates to about 450 milliamps so we're almost at the limit of the fuse and you can see that we've lost about 0.17 um, watts through our fuse but there is no change in THD there is no change in the SNR. Here we have about 450 milliamps going into our half amp fuse and we are sweeping from 20 hertz to 30 kilohertz and the yellow trace is going into the fuse and the red trace is going out of the fuse. You can see there is loss, maybe half a dB. And as we have seen before, there really is no change in the frequency response. So right now I've swapped the fuses out with a 2 amp fast blow fuse. And you can see that with 1 watt or about 350 milliamps going through the 2 amp fuse, we're losing about 0.02 watts. You can also see that our gain has gone down by about 0.06 dB. SNRs are identical and really the THDs are pretty much identical. Now I'm going to go ahead and increase the power level so that I've got 25.4 watts or about 1.78 amps going through the 2 amp fuse. You can see our power loss is about half a dB. THDs really are the same as are the SNRs. So other than the drop of power going through the fuse, the SNRs and THDs are about the same. Here is the frequency response of the 2 amp fuse with about 350 milliamps going through it. The yellow trace is into the fuse and the red trace is out of the fuse. So aside from maybe a tenth of a dB loss, the frequency response looks the same. And if we go and bring our power up to 25.4 watts into 8 ohms or about 1.78 amps, you see that the frequency response still looks pretty much the same and the loss has increased a little bit to maybe oh, 0.15 dB. Right now I've got a 3 amp fuse installed and we're putting about 2.76 amps through it which is about 61 watts into 8 ohms. You can see that our input to the fuse is a bit higher than the output, so we're losing about half a watt. You can see the gain is about uh, 0.04 dB less uh, coming out of the fuse. SNR is really no change there, and the THD is pretty much the same. So other than a small amount of gain change, as we're approaching the limit of the fuse, we are not seeing anything overly significant, at least in my opinion. Here is the frequency response with a 3 amp fuse and with about 2.76 amps going through that fuse. And you're looking at the frequency response, obviously, from 20 hertz to 30 kilohertz. You can see that there really is no difference between the uh, input to the fuse and the output of the fuse. Well, there's a very small uh, loss, as we've seen of signal going through the fuse at this power level.
but the frequency response itself has not changed. With the input signal set for 100 hertz and about 30 watts into 8 ohms, you can see that we are looking pretty much the same for the 2 amp fuse. Our THD and SNRs are pretty much all the same. And you can see there is a small drop across the fuse, 29.9 watts versus 29.3 watts. And the gain is slightly less on the side of the output of the fuse. So it's not that much of a change. Now I've got a 100 hertz going through the 3 amp fuse. And at about 61.1 watts, that's about... 2.76 amps going through the 3 amp fuse and it looks pretty much the same as it did when I had the 1 kilohertz signal applied. There's maybe a half a watt difference in power between the uh, going into the fuse and coming out of the fuse and that's shown up in the gain is a little less but the THD is the same, SNR is the same, THD plus noise is the same. Right now I've got 3.71 amps going through a 4 amp fuse and these are all fast blow fuses in case I have not pointed that out. Basically we're dropping a watt across the fuse and there's really no difference in THD or SNR or the THD post noise at this point. Here is the frequency response plot for the 4 amp fuse with about 3.71 amps going through it from 20 hertz to 30 kilohertz and you can see that the frequency response plots are almost on top of each other there is a small amount of loss for the red trace compared to the yellow trace so that once again the yellow is going into the fuse and the red is coming out of the fuse so as we saw it loses about a watt and we're putting out around 110 watts into 8 ohms in this case I've set the test frequency to 100 hertz and we're putting out about 111 watts into 8 ohms or about 3.71 amps through the 4 amp fuse and it looks pretty much the same like it did with the 1 kilohertz or the 5 kilohertz test signals. SNRs are about the same, THDs are about the same uh, and we just see the little bit of loss coming out of the fuse or about 0 0.04 dB of loss more precisely. Right now I've switched the test frequency to 5 kilohertz and we're still putting in 111 watts and getting out 110 watts so nothing really changed there that is the same as about 3.71 amps into the 8 ohm loads going through the 4 amp fuse you can see there's really no difference between the THD or the SNRs and just the gain still is about 0 0.04 dB less for the channel right here, the right channel, which is the output of the fuse. I hope you enjoyed looking at all that data as much as I enjoyed taking all that data for you. And what I'm going to do now is put up a PowerPoint showing what I think are the takeaways from all that data. So let me put that up now. Here is a short PowerPoint presentation I put together to show what I thought were the fuse test takeaways. The first one THD and SNR did not change more than what would be caused by measurement drift. Frequency response did not change. The THD and SNR were not affected by the test frequencies that I used, which were 100 hertz, 1 kilohertz, and 5 kilohertz. Smaller value fuses as you approach their current limit have more loss than a larger fuse approaching its max current limit. The worst loss was 0.5 dB for a 0.5 amp fuse with 450 milliamps going through it. For a 4 amp fuse with 3.7 amps going through it, the loss was 0.5 dB. And I also looked to see if there was any change in phase going through the 4 amp fuse at 1 kilohertz and 3.71 amps using my oscilloscope in the XY mode, and there was absolutely no phase change. Basically, aside from the expected attenuation of the signal going through the fuse, which will decrease as you put in a larger fuse, there really isn't going to be any change in the sound other than there might be a few tenths of a dB. I think we saw maybe uh, 0.05 dB worst case for 
a 4 amp fuse for a half amp fuse as you approach the maximum current. It may have been a bit more uh, closer to maybe half a dB. But for a standard size fuse, which probably would be 2 to 4 amps, I'm, I'm guessing for speaker protection, you're probably not going to hear anything different by having a fuse in there from what I can tell. At least the distortion isn't going to change and the frequency response isn't really going to change. And since both uh, speakers are going to have that same fuse, that they'll both be affected by the same amount. So there really should be no change in what you hear. If there's some other magical properties being imparted by the fuse, uh, I can't measure that. So I'll, I'll let the audiophile fuse people tell us about those properties. But anyway, that's why I didn't really think I needed to test any audiophile fuses because I don't really see a change with a regular fuse worth mentioning other than in this little video. So once again, I'm sure there will be some comments as to my testing methodology or suggestions to prove it, that kind of thing. And if you like the video, you know, always give a thumbs up. And if you didn't like the video, I guess you could give a thumbs down to be fair. But hopefully you like it more than you disliked it. Also, if you have not subscribed to the channel, that would be a great thing to do to help the channel grow. So once again, until next time, have a great day or night.